It is easy to pick up the Bible and read it. However, how do we read it the way it was meant to be read, to be read for all it's worth? Stay tuned to this week's episode of The Truth Form with Jerry Davis and Matthew Files. Jerry has a master's in evangelism and Greek, and Matthew has a master's in the philosophy of religion. Get answers to your toughest biblical questions here on The Truth Forum. You know, you never know the uh, the opportunities the Lord may give you to share with somebody. I had a doctor appointment this last week, and um, the fellow who came in to see me and prepped me for the doctor to come in uh, had an accent that I thought I recognized, and so I asked him, I said, can I ask you, are you from Nigeria? And he said, spot on, how did you know? <laughs> And I, I just told him, I said, well, I, I think I could tell by your accent. I, I've been there. And uh, he asked me where I was at there, and I told him Abuja is where we were uh, headquartered out of. But uh, um, anyway, we talked a little bit, and I, I talked to him about the fact that Nigeria is pretty much a divided country. It's pretty much half Muslim, half professing Christian at least, or people, you know, that are being reached by Christians. And uh, it's one of the most persecuted uh, countries in the world, by the way, for Christians now. Hmm. It's on the top 10 list for sure. And uh, at least by the voice of the martyrs it is. But I was able to then just talk to him about the fact that Nigeria is a country that, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, persecution of Christians there. And and, uh, so, it's amazing. The Lord can just open up doors for you. You never know. And, yeah. uh, uh, and that was just a door that was opened up for me to share with him a little bit about the Lord this week. Um, I actually had a doctor in Michigan one time, and I asked him, uh, my, my primary care physician, I said, you mind me asking about your spiritual life? Are you a Christian? And he said, well, I'm Armenian. And then he told me that his grandparents were from Armenia, and came over here because of persecution. And it was quite a, quite a story that he told me, but he said, you know, we're not supposed to talk to you about that. Meaning physicians are not supposed to share with you uh, spiritually. But he did, he opened up and I, yeah. I appreciated that. So uh, we're looking at the word of God and why should you read the word of God mm-hmm. and how can you read the word of God for all it's worth? That's what our sessions have been yeah. recently. Mike, I think you missed last week. Yeah. Um, I brought three Bibles with me tonight and I did it for a particular reason. Uh, this particular Bible, I spent a year going through looking for every reference I could find in the word of God where it refers to itself as being the Word of God. After I got through, I totaled all the reference up, references up that I found, and I came up with 6,311 times that the Bible refers to itself as being the Word of God. And uh, if you just went to Genesis chapter 1, I found 12 times in that first chapter where there's a reference to these words being the words of God. And God said, Mm -hmm. let there be light, okay? And God said, let there be an expanse, okay? So uh, I, I brought this Bible with me. Whenever one, whenever someone questions whether or not this is the Word of God, the best reference you're going to have to it being the Word of God is the Word of God. 6,311 times I found a reference to it being the Word of God. Um, So one of the reasons you need to read the Word of God is because they are the words of God. Amen. You know, and you're not going to find those words anywhere else in any other writings uh, at all th- that, I, uh, that I know of or care about. Well, the proof also is in the last chapter of Revelation when John says that there will be nothing added or nothing taken away. It's done. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, yeah. to me, that finishes it all. There you Amen. go. Okay. Um, the second Bible I brought is one 
that I spent a year going through. And this particular one I spent going through and looking for all of the promises of God that I could find in the Bible. And I came up with 12,956 times that God makes a promise in the Bible. Not all of these are for you and I. Some of them are for groups of people. Some of them were for specific individuals. Uh, But many of them are uh, promises that you and I could claim in our lives. So uh, that one, one of the reasons for reading the Word of God is who, who else's word are you going to take as promises that you can take to the bank, so to speak, Amen. in this world? Uh, other, some people may mean well, you know, uh, but the only person whose word you can ever genuinely really count on when it comes to the promises uh, that, that are made to you are those promises that come from God. And, and people who don't get into the Word of God then miss out. Mm-hmm. Miss out on those promises. And if you're missing out on the promises of God, you're missing out on blessings. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the second Bible. The third Bible I brought with me is one that I spent a year going through the Bible looking for every reference I could find to the will of God. And I found 11,386 times references to what God's will is for man. Here again, not all of those are for all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, if anybody says they want to know what God's will is, the best direction I know to give them, of course, pray about it, certainly. But spend time in the Word of God. You're never going to find any better place to find God's will than in His Word. This is what He said is your will. Mm -hmm. You know? And so ignorance of the will of God, ignorance of the promises of God, ignorance of what the Bible has to say about itself being the Word of God, um, those things are so important. You can't possibly read the Bible for all it's worth if you ignore all those things. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I put a couple of notes down here to share with you too when it comes to the Word of God. Some people despise the Word of God. Some people deny the Word of God. Some people distort the Word of God. And some are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth in the Word of God. But I think one thing that may be... Um, more detrimental to the Word of God in our day is that the Word of God is just being disregarded. It's not the people who despise it necessarily who are doing the most damage, not the people who deny it that are doing the most damage, not the people who distort it necessarily that are doing the most damage. It's those of us who profess to believe it's the Word of God, and we just disregard it, you know. We, we just don't spend that much time in it. And I then I wrote down this word this week. It's a quote from Adrian Rogers. One thing I found to be true in all my years of ministry, if you do not love, know, understand, practice, and obey the word of God, you cannot be a victorious Christian. Hmm. I thought that's a good quote. Of course, uh, Adrian's been gone quite a few years now, yeah. but um, but the greatest problem when it comes to the Word of God, Word of God in our day, is uh, folks who just disregard it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and that kind of goes back to what I, I made mention last week that one of the biggest uh, ways where we have uh, we have failed and properly reading the word of God as we have failed to read the word of God. Um, I mean, if we, if we really take an honest look at ourselves and ask ourselves on average, how, how much time do I spend a day in God's word? 
and compare that to just about any anything else mm. our tv our phones our pets we can probably put a whole list uh, together with our and where and uh, we ought to ask ourselves where does that where does our Bible reading time stack up? Obviously, there's going to be things if you're still working, you know they, that obviously like an eight-hour shift. There's going to be things that you can't help. That's going to be more. But uh, I, I love how people have said, "You want to know who's your God? Uh, check your check your wallet, check your calendar, uh, because how you, where you spend your money." where you spend your time is a good indicator of who or what you worship, uh, who or what you love. Um, and so how much time we spend in God's word. And, you know, this is convicting for me as well. Like how much time am I literally, am I, am I spending in God's word? Uh, if, if I'm, you know, if I, cl- I claim to be a Christian, I claim to love God's word. I claim that it is God's word. I, you know, Second Peter three sixteen is the, it, it's the word of God is profitable for teaching, rebuking, for correction, and righteousness. Uh, and I claim all these things, but if I neglect it, uh, what am I, what am I doing other than being a big old contradiction? Um, so absolutely, you know, there's this too. I think Matthew that. Uh, um, the some people say that knowledge is power i agree with that however um, knowledge of the word of god is spiritual power Mm -hmm. so um and that's different that's a little bit different yeah you can you can have enough education in the world uh, secular education or whatever uh, in, in the job field you're in, whatever. Uh, and that dig- does give you some power. Uh, the other thing is power is really authority. Can you imagine if I was invited into the president's oval room and in that oval room he said to me, Jerry, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I've decided I'm going to give you some authority. Really? Yeah. Uh, The authority that you and I have in this world as Christians comes from the authority that is given to us through the Word of God. I mean, that's our power. Without the authority that God gives us to live the Christian life, to do whatever, to bear witness, you know, he gives us the power to do that. And uh, so we need his authority. We need his power. All right. So we had started last week with talking about how not to read your Bible. Um, And I thought you did a great job taking us through some some traps or some common uh, misconceptions or mistakes that people make when when coming to the Word of God. Um, and I, I like the analogy you used last week about how some people kind of treat it, and it sort of it's when you said it, 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 it kind of it, it's got a, sort of a strikingness to it. But at the same time, you sort of see the the similarities when you said some people treat the Bible like it's some Ouija board, like they've opened it up and mm-hmm. and sort of waiting for the the hand to you know, put on, and it's just a, a uh, definitely not a, a a helpful way to go to the Word of God. Uh, so we we've talked about some of those uh, way not so good ways to go to the Word of God, and so and then we we talked about. We start going into we, we I mentioned seven seven ways that we can uh, improve our Bible reading habits. Seven ways that we can, as we go to God's Word, that we can read it for all it's worth. I mentioned first off, find a translation that's going to work for you. We, we talked a little bit about that last week. 
Uh, I did post on our Facebook page a picture of, uh, uh, of a good, useful chart so you can see where the different translations fall in line uh, regarding um, word-for-word -word translations versus meaning to meaning and even paraphrase and where they land on land al along those lines uh, and so i encourage you guys to to take a look at that because then you can also take a look at uh your translations and compare okay where does it land on this line um, we have a handout to give at some point we'll give that to you about different translations yeah. and and um, where they are in in those two different types of translations that are being done word for word or phrase for phrase and right yeah right uh and then i i made uh we had made mention about not treating not having to treat the bible as uh some people mistakenly do thinking uh that oh i got to treat this like a a regular book you read it from one cover to cover which i mean it, it would definitely benefit you in the sense of uh because the old testament prepares us for the New Testament. I highly encourage you to go into the New uh, Old Testament. Uh, but with that said, again, many people as they're reading Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, they start slowing down, struggling. Uh, and so we talked about some starting points where you could g jump into uh, some books of the Bible that would be good starts to start reading to understand, especially for those who are, who are beginner readers. Uh, and then we... Then I wanted to get into the third step. So this is where we're starting to the third step. The third step here, and, and I, I want to be careful because we are going to be talking about how to study the Word of God. Uh, so I won't go too deep, but I do think that even if we're not, even before we go into a deep study, if we're just wanting to read, the third step here is that we ought to do some light studying before we read. Uh, this doesn't mean having to do some exhaustive uh, studying at this point, but some preparatory studying is, is, is extremely helpful. Uh, and a, as a later step, I'm going to may, make mention about going into a book of, book of the Bible, excuse me, and sticking with it. And part of the reasons why that's helpful is because when you study the book of the, the Bible, say, you, say you're going to read through the book of John, you can do some studying and, prep and preparing you to read through the book of John. And that studying will help you throughout that time as you read. Whereas if you're jumping from place to place to place, not only are you missing out on context and, and, and all those things, but you're, you're going to have to, if you want to have the same level of understanding and context, you're going to be having to do studying here this day, studying here that day, studying here that day. But if you are pre-preparing, like I want, I'm going to learn a little bit about this book of John before I read it. That's going to carry you through for, depending on how how much you read a day, you know, a few days, a few weeks, uh, it will last you a little bit longer. Uh, but it's important that we do have some preparations of of understanding what we are about to read. Again, that doesn't require doing anything in depth. Most Bibles, especially study Bibles, so if you, I, my, the, my study Bible that I use is extremely helpful, MacArthur Study Bible. Uh, the beginning of each book, it'll tell you uh, who the author, author is and how do we notice the, that particular author, uh, context, so when it was written, where it was written, uh, things along those lines, helpful stuff so that you kind of have a good idea, okay, this is what's going on. And this is something that we would we, we do all the time. I mean, I want to I know for some of us it's longer than others, and for me it's a little shorter than others. But I want to imagine y'all going back to high school. All right. Oh. <laughs> us us guys, we're just just starting to grow uh, that peach fuzz on our upper lips. And we think that we're really cool because we have peach fries on our upper lips. So uh, we're back in high school, and I'll, now I want you to imagine that you've come, to, you've come to your desk, and all you look down and there's a letter on your desk, all right, and there's hearts all over that letter, 
Now, as guys, okay. we're pretty excited. Like, okay, okay. And girls, you know, maybe, you know, like, oh, there's a there's a, a sensitive guy that's showing affection towards me. Well, this is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's just face it. You're going to be, you're, there's going to be some things that you want to know about this letter. First off, you want to know who it's from because... Let's just face it, uh, there might be one, some of the girls in your class, you might, if, if it was from them, you might take that letter and mm-hmm. deposit it. On the other end, if it's, if it's that girl that you've been growing out that peach fuzz for, you, you think you know, you're, 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 your voice is cracking, uh, but you, you've got you got one bl- one black hair growing in, and you you're sort of letting it grow because you want to impress that girl. And so if this this love letter is from her, that makes all the difference. So you want to know who the author of this letter is, because uh, that author, who that author is, is vitally important. Secondly, you want to know is it for you? How embarrassing would it be for for you to go to the person who gave you gave, put the letter on your desk? And then just open up with your unfailing love for them, only for the girl to say, um, that letter wasn't for you. I was I placed it on your desk to be passed so that you'd pass it to your friend sitting next to you. Oh, <laughs> so embarrassing. Uh, so who the author of the letter is important and to whom the letter was written is vitally important. And then if, if, it, if it was from who we were hoping it was from, and it was for us who we were hoping it was for, then we open it up. And now we are reading every single word. We want to know every little bit. We're reading everything we can into those words. Where every nuance, we want to know what this letter says. And I don't know about y'all, but... I, there's always, with the rise in text messaging, it is so hard to read a person's uh, emotions. Uh, and there's some people who they text, they'll put the dot, dot, dot after everything. And I know when I text and I put dot, 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 it means, like, I, I'm cautious. But I know some people that put the dot, dot, dot after everything. And so sometimes I'll get a text message and they'll say, okay, dot, dot, dot. And for me, I read, okay. So then I start getting worried. Like, uh, did I say something wrong? Did I, you know, are they upset with me? Are they confused? What did I do? But I, I've learned for some people, you just they, that, that's just what they do. Uh, so you're looking at this letter and you're reading into everything. You want to know the meeting. You're studying this. You may even go to her and like double check. You said this right here, just making sure this is what you meant, right? Mm. Uh, you, when you said you like like me, you that really that means you do you like me, right? <laughs> not not just as a friend, right? I remember uh, when my wife and I, when, before we got married and we were dating. Uh, we were uh, we were messaging each other on I think it was Yahoo Messenger uh, back when computers were still going when you get on the internet. Uh, but uh, I remember we were on Yahoo Messenger and we were chatting back and forth and I was st- we were obviously starting to develop feelings for each other and we wanted to express those feelings but we were sort of afraid to, you know how we all were you don't want to be turned down you you don't want to to be open and only for it not to be not to come back and so you're typing in such a way you, you almost a little cryptic just to sit, just in case they are, you know, they decide, no, 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 so that you can kind of sort of deny it. You know, well, that's not what I meant. Uh, so when when you get that letter anyways, you're wanting to know what the context is. You want to know, you, you're, you're determining, is this a love letter? Who is it from? Is it for me? Is it positive? You're wanting to know all those things. And that's going to obviously help you in understanding the letter. When we go into God's word, we want to know 
Uh, there, there are some things that are, we want to know when we read it that we're reading it properly. Uh, you don't want to, again, as I made mention, read, as sometimes we do, read a text message wrong or email wrong. We want to make sure that we're reading it correctly, that we're getting the intention from the text. And one of the primary ways and simplest and quickest ways we can do that is ask some simple questions. Uh, one of the questions is, why was it written? For example, many of the New Testament letters were written, and that this will actually be the second question, to whom was it written? It was written to churches, so there was a specific church that it was being written to, and then often, why was it written? There was a specific purpose that the, written, the letter was being written for. Uh, in, in many cases, it was some heresy that has cropped up in the church, like Gnosticism, and which, which is what I believe First John, uh, in which you had brought up, mm -hmm. was addressing. And so when you read these things, understanding that context is vitally important. Uh, for example, if I, I'm trying to recall, I believe there's a passage, if, if someone denies that Jesus is a man, he is... Uh, he is an apostate, or he is uh, not one of us. And so, so for us, we're left going, wait, well, that's a that's a sort of a strange expression here. But when we read in the context of that people were, it was addressing an issue where they were denying the humanity of Christ. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense why that was being addressed and being addressed as harshly as it was. So knowing why it was written is vitally important for us in understanding uh, what is what we're reading, when it was written, because uh, this wasn't written to us in the 21st century. Uh, so understanding the cultural, historical context, what was going on. I, I, one of the coolest things is when you do a study of the festivals and you see in Jesus, and, and, and many of the instances of Jesus talking uh, it recorded during the festivals, and uh, some of the imagery that he uses, you don't really fully understand or can really fully appreciate unless you understand what he's alluding to when he when he talks about certain things. And so uh, it is it's really neat to really dive into. Oh, okay, so he would have been standing here, and so he when he mentions this particular event of this is particular happening, he's talking about this. Uh, and so it's, it's really neat. And so knowing when it was written, knowing that context, the so-called context, and then who wrote it. Uh, so uh, who, who was writing it can be vitally important for us as well. And so when we know the answer to these questions, it helps us and when we read scripture to avoid misreading it and to read what is is intended and this some again can be something that's done relatively quickly it's something that i i do as a refresher even when i'm going into a new book of the bible uh reading through a, through it again i'll refresh myself with my study bible like okay what is the context here again what is who's the author when it was written i'm asking myself these very questions making sure i'm familiar with them so that as i'm reading through it I got that. I have that context in mind. This is incredibly, incredibly and there, helpful. And there are so many tools Absolutely. available for us today. My goodness, you can take any book of the Bible and just go to Wikipedia, and uh, and there will be information there about a, a, a Bible book, the years that it was covering, or mm -hmm. when it was written. Um, there are just so many tools, that are, and we will try and have a list of some of the Bible study tools also by way of a handout at some point, or can, can email it. Yeah, I mean, we're to going to be talking about how to study the Bible, and uh, I actually did a whole session on how to study the Bible for the Marian Baptist Association, so I'm, I'm excited to actually yeah. to go over that with you. I think... Uh, and let me say, I think we tend to overcomplicate things when we read the Bible. Mm -hmm. We're so concerned that we're not going to be able to understand what's in it. Okay? And um, 
I'm going to give you three things that I would suggest when it comes to the Word of God. You need to stow it in your heart. You're going to do that by reading it, by studying it, by memorizing it, by meditating on it. All of those things are involved in stowing it in your heart. Um, and, and that's not complicated. The, the more you read, the more you study, the more you memorize, the more you meditate, okay? It's not complicated. Um, you're going to be stowing it in your heart. Uh, and we're going to have a session on uh, memorizing the Word of God too. But, um, and then the second thing is show it in your life. Uh, we all heard somebody say, you know, the best Bible somebody's ever going to read is when they look at our life, right? Uh, now, we're, we don't want them to look at us. We want them to look at Christ. At the same time, people are going to look at us anyway to see whether or not we are applying some of the principles and the commands and the precepts and the teachings that we're getting from the Word of God. But the third thing is, and this is not complicated, but for some reason it seems to be in the church today. The third thing is we need to sow it mm -hmm. in the world. If you're not in the world, Word of God, if you're not filling yourself with the Word of God, you've got nothing to sow mm -hmm. in the world. And... Uh, I bought this today. My wife and I were shopping for flowers, and I ran across this. I was going to try and get enough of these to give to whoever was here, and I'm glad there wasn't a whole lot from the standpoint of me buying and giving them. I didn't know that seeds were this expensive. This is chive seeds, and there aren't a whole lot in here. A dollar sixty-nine. Oh, I really? Thought, yeah, yeah. It's gone up. Anyway, <clears throat> but imagine this. I have a sister who's on a farm in Ohio. And they've just plowed the fields to get ready to sow. Okay? And you or they, let's say you or I, we get up and we've got this packet of seeds. And I walk up and down. My sister, I think they have 100 acres where they are, and that's just part of a larger situation. But... Imagine if I go up and down every row that's been plowed. And furrows are there so you can plant seed. And I carry this packet all day with me. I've walked every one of those. And at the end of the day, I take that and put it in my pocket. I never opened the packet up. I never dropped a single seed. Do you know how many folks are not sowing the Word of God today? And, and we spend time in it. We read it. Mm -hmm. We're stowing it. But you know what's a shame? is that so many times we fail to sow the seed because we're afraid that when we sow the seed, it's not going to grow. That it, we're going to get, that somebody's going to say, no, thank you. Or somebody's going to get upset with us. But if we fail to sow any seed at all, then we almost guarantee, then we guarantee nothing, nothing, nothing to nothing. harvest, nothing to harvest. Yep. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I, and, and that's the, the, the balance here. You may mention we tend to over, overcomplicate things is that the balance is, is that, you know, we're talking about how to read the, read the Bible for all it's worth. And we're going to be talking about how to study the Bible for all it's worth. And there's a tendency to almost overcomplicate it, and yeah. uh, and so I hope hopefully we are doing a a good job at saying yeah. you don't have to be a scholar to to study the Word of God. At the same time, though, and I think that you would agree that there is there is no end in the ability to to dig into the Word of God. There is no end. That you can study, you can, you can go, uh, you can be a child all the way up to the, the 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 PhD biblical scholar and still dig into the Word of God and mm -hmm. and get new things out of it each and every day, and 
uh, and just the Bible is, is is amazing in that way. And so, um, I like to use the analogy of uh, of commu- uh, communicative technology. So, uh, back a while ago, you used to have a radio. Uh, that's prior to TVs. That's how you had to get your entertainment, right? You listen to a radio, and you used to to have listen to stories over the radio and I literally there were and, and you'd listen to sports games over the radio and that was your entertainment families would gather around the radio listening and and the the radio host would go into detail and and be ex- excited and, and talking about what's going on in these events uh, but there's a reason why we went from a radio to a TV that there, there is a level of improvement when we went, came to a TV that there's something more that we get when we, when we are able to see the picture. Um, and, but with the first TVs that we got, they were, they were black and white, they were small, they were a little blurry. Uh, and so we see that, the, again, that where there's an improvement when we, we've gotten larger TV, high def, ultra 4K, that there there is a level of improvement and part of that improvement is clarity that there is more detail that we can see and that there is less area for mistakes so for example if i'm just listening to the radio i i may mistake what is going on on the other hand if i got this 4k ultra tv where i could see the fly on the quarterbacks back from you know all the way into the back you know, because the TV is so large, you you seen so much more detail. Likewise, with the Word of God, like it is, it is simple enough to where as you as you read it, even a even a child will benefit from going to the, reading the Word of God. But it's got such depth and such ability that even the the scholar who who examines it very closely is able to 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 dig, continue to dig out of the Word of God. And so I encourage you encourage you that. Uh, it's not too difficult, but it, you are always going to find yourself in an approved, situa- approved situation by by getting the tools, taking the time, and digging in. And I know we're getting short on time, and I don't really would like to to turn this into a three part series. Uh, I mentioned number four. I've kind of already touched on it, so I won't take too long. Number four is pick a book in the Bible and work your way through it. You stick with something. It's going to it's going to benefit you from rather than jumping back and forth. Jay mentioned that previously last week. Uh, it's going to help you in in keeping that context. Versus if you jump from here to here to this verse and this book to that verse and that book, you're going to have a hard time uh, maintaining context and understanding within the context. And again, it enables you to prior to studying, prepare yourself. What is this book? about what are the who's the author what's the purpose on that stuff so that you're better prepared as you read and then you can see how it all works together because especially paul you see paul is very much he he's very much a logician and putting together his arguments and jumping right into the middle of his argument is really uh uh taken away of what he has, is is putting together and what God has led him to, to do. And so you're always going to benefit, I think, from uh, sticking with the book of the Bible uh, and reading through it. So, Our time is up. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm yeah. I, I, I'm number five, read a little every day. I mean, even if, even if you got very little time, do something. You know, I encourage you to take more time than a couple minutes, but don't ever be like, well, I only have a couple minutes. It's not worth it. It is. Take time every day. Feed on the word every single day. You wouldn't skip a meal or a whole, well, sometimes we skip meals, but you wouldn't skip a day of eating. Um, you, you would, you'd struggle if you did. Don't skip time in the word of God, even if you don't have a lot of time. Don't skip time of the Word of God. And one of the things I I, I recently came across uh, was the they said the issue is that you don't have enough time. That's not the issue. The issue is that you put other things in uh, in places they ought not to be in. Priorities. Priorities 
there are some things that you need to go, that is not a priority. If I'm saying I don't have enough time to read the Bible because I'm doing this, then maybe this needs to be shuffled because maybe it needs to be the case I don't have enough time to do that because I'm reading the Word of God. By the way, uh, if you listen to the Word of God and there are all kinds of, you can download verbal yeah. Word of God, the entire Bible, uh, and have people read it to you if you've got headsets or whatever For you free. do. I have, you know. Uh, 77 hours is what it takes for somebody at, at, they call it pulpit speed, pulpit reading speed. I don't know what that is. That's a long uh, time. Huh? That's a long time, 77 hours. Mm-hmm. Well, but that's, you, you will have heard the entire Bible. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you want to talk about it in reading time, read three chapters a day and pick one day out of the week to read five. Three chapters a day, one day a week to read five chapters, you will read the Bible in a year. Yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not that much to read. Mm-hmm. And if but you have it a is commu- discipline. If you have a commute to work, and let's say you have a, I have a half an hour commute to work. So if I you know, listen to it a half an hour a day, 77 hours, mm-hmm. uh, what is it, 154 uh, trips, um, so I mean that 100. So that would take me 154 days. That's that's less than a year. So yeah, yep. So uh, number six, talking about the Holy Spirit. Pray before you give, pray before you begin. You pray as you read the Word of God. Pray the Word of God back to God. Mm-hmm. You know, be a person of prayer uh, because we ought to be rightly dividing the Word of God. Like this is the Word of God. We want to make sure that we are. Uh, we are honoring the Lord with our, our studying and reading and, and reading God's word. And you know, I believe that God honors our, our desire to, to know his word and to, to know it properly. Uh, and then lastly, I suggest you read your Bible with paper and pen in hand. Uh, read it in, in a desire to respond. So... Yeah, you may want to be just ask, be ready to write down what is this, what what did I just read? That's a good question to be asking yourself when you've read, uh, whether it's a chapter, whether it's a few verses or a section. Ask yourself and write it down. What did I just read? How many times have you read something and after you've read it, realize, wait a second, I zoned out. I actually don't know what I read. So ask yourself, what did I read? And then write it down, because when you write it down, it's going to help internalize it better. Um, ask yourself, okay, what does this passage, uh, what, is, what does this passage mean? What is, you know, take some time, listen to, to the Holy Spirit, listen to God. What does this passage mean to, to me? How can, this, how can this be applied to my life? One of the greatest uh, times in, in my devotional is, is being still and, and listening to, to God. Um, after reading his word, praying, uh, and just and being still and allowing his word to, to mull over and allowing the Holy Spirit to use it and, and, and help me to... Um, and, and it's just such a beautiful time in my life to sit there and, and pray over his word and listen uh, to him. Uh, so I, I highly encourage you to be, uh, be in, in, in the Word, be in prayer, and, and, and write it down. And, because ultimately, you, you can have like a journal, and then you keep track of it. And, then, and it's so neat to see uh, in that journal, to see where, where have you come from, where have you learned. Where, and, th- and then it's also something you can go back to and, and for reference and, and, and ultimately, again, see where God is taking you. Um, so those are the seven simple steps I think that you can use as you're reading God's word to get the most out of it.